Today, I'm going to be explaining another important article about contrastive learning. And here we use meta learning, but we combine it with contrastive learning in the context of uh, semi supervised learning. So, I'm going to be explaining this article in this lecture. And the idea is that meta learning aims to endow models with the ability to quickly learn new tasks based on existing knowledge. However, recent works have relied on complex structures and prior information to improve performance on few shot tasks. And I have a playlist for few shot learning. Well, in that playlist, I also talk about meta learning. So in this article, they propose meta CL, a meta learning architecture that uses only a traditional backbone without any priors. Meta CL distorted versions of an episode of samples as input, so it takes them, and outputs predictions respectively. They also introduce an unsupervised loss to minimize component redundancy and maximize variability, achieving soft whitening and soft alignment constraints. So there are three contributions in this paper. They distinct so meta CL their model distinguishes itself from the other metric based meta learning methods by taking the query set samples as input for representation learning which mitigates the limitations of relying solely on support set information meta cl is a simple yet effective baseline that maximizes that utilizes only the data augmentation and an unsupervised loss making it easy to extend or incorporate into other models. And the experimental results demonstrate that their unsupervised loss enforces soft whitening and soft alignment constraints on the representation vectors leading to improved few shot classification performance. So there are many papers that combine, that leverage a constrained, uh, a contrastive learning for few-shot learning. And one of them is this paper. So if you just want to use few-shot learning, you can just use one of their models such as ProtoNet. And then you have, uh, like any other few-shot learning method, you have supporting set, you have query set, you have encoder, and then you have metric learning approach for this few-shot learning. But in this setting, their meta CL model, first we do augmentation not only for support set, but also for query set. And now we have augmentation one and augmentation two, but it's a mixture of support and query. Then we give it to contrastive learning. Not only that, we also have as usual, we have the metric learning as usual. So self-supervised learning attempts to learn useful representations of input data without human prior and annotation information. Contrastive learning is a main method of self-supervised learning. The core of contrastive learning is to learn a mapping function for embedding the sample into its representation. So S here is a, just a similarity between representation of X and representation of X plus, because X plus is a positive sample of X. And here X minus is just a negative sample of X. And then we use a uh, uh, CPC users uh, probabilistic, you know, info and CE loss that I've explained in a different video. It uses a probabilistic contrastive loss, which is called info and CE, and widely used in future contrastive methods.
Info and CE can be treated as a cross entropy loss. As you see here, it's, it's, it's just a cross entropy loss for our end classification task. And SIMCLR, this idea SIMCLR that I explained before, treats positive and negative sample pairs differently in the loss function. MOCO uses asymmetric layering updates with momentum encoders. I've also explained non-contrastive methods because they don't use negative examples like SIMCLR and BVIL in two different lectures. So they also use the asymmetric architecture. And BVIL, as I said in a video, it relies on two neural networks, a line path, target, net, target path, and then uh, we create the loss based on them. So they interact and learn from each other. SimCM only uses a stop gradient operation in preventing collapse. This is the only tools that that the that SimCM uses just stop gradient. <clears throat> and Barlow twins, although this this architecture is very simple, but I mean the theoretical things are still. Uh, I have seen very few papers that work on theoretical stuff for that. So our main objective is to improve high-level feature representations without adding model parameters or complicated input pre-processing. Contrastive learning is a self-supervised method that extracts more accurate and robust representations. However, popular methods like SIMCLR, MOCO, really require large training batches. I mean, you have many batches to reduce the impact of data bias. The training process of few shot learning differs from general classification as it involves episode training with only a few support and core samples per iteration. Applying traditional contrastive loss and its variations directly may result in significant data deviation making it difficult for the entire model to converge. Instead of requiring large batches or sampling strategies, this Barlow twins follows the use of high dimensional feature representation vectors. Therefore, we combine contrastive learning with fusion tasks to, to propose a novel and simple baseline architecture like this architecture. So we have support and query, but we do augmentation for both support and query. So this is the random augmentation one, random augmentation two. As you see, it is both for the support and for query random augmentation for both support and query. And then here we have this CT loss, which I will explain. So this figure, as you see here, the, sh the parameters are shared here, and here uh, illustrates the generation of two distorted views for an episode and two representations of episodes are obtained by a shared backbone. Augment 1 and Augment 2 denotes two random augmentations into the input images. The most meta-learning methods, the images are input into models with random data augmentation. They often adopt random image jitter, which is uh, operated on brightness, contrast, and color. In this paper, we apply additional left-right flipping and up-down flipping file followed by random image jitter. We use metric-based learning, Euclidean distance and these representations, and compute two classification losses for predicting a query point to the ground truth class Y. The classification loss is computed using cross-entropy as you see here, it's, it's just a cross-entropy loss. A distance here is just Euclidean distance between the vectors f theta and p. 
because this one is a prototype. The prototype is, is it's a mean vector of sample embeddings that S i represents sample of class i in the support set and n s i respectively is the number of these uh, uh, supports and f theta here f theta is the mapping function of the encoder module so we compute an unsupervised loss based on barlow twins on the two augmentations a barlow twins is very simple you know you just use a cross correlation matrix the c sub i and j is computed on batch dimension and b b here is just the index of batch sample i and j is the dimension of feature vectors and we see assume that z and zp and zq uh, is in, in r b times d so c is is just a square matrix is a square matrix with values in the range minus one because it's the the best anti-correlation and one is the best correlation so it's between minus one everything here is between minus one and one and finally uh, the way that you use the entries of this matrix c is that you put the diagonal one is are here the diagonal one use it here and the off diagonal the other one are the are these entries and then L of CT, this loss, this CT loss consists of two parts. The first part, I mean, this part, it, it makes representation vectors robust and, and invariant to image distortions. But the second term, which is this term, the second term, it aims to they correlate different vector components to reduce redundancy across vector channels according to periodicity and similarity of features with high level channel. And lambda here is just the hyperparameter, it's set to this number. And then the total loss is that the CT loss and the classification one, classification two. And beta here is just the constant trade-off with the importance uh, between the two losses. So the algorithm, first we get the random augmentation, not only for support, but also for query. Then we get random augmentation for not only support, for uh, also for query. And then we compute these losses together with the CT loss. And then finally, the total loss is here the total loss for a training episode because in each episode in each episode we have some classes and each one from each one we have some samples some shots for example k shots and we have n uh, classes for example or m classes 